Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so now let us try to understand the role of enzymes in chemical reactions because as I said, the purpose of enzymes is to act as biocatalysts. So they play a role in chemical reactions. So let us try to understand the concept of chemical reaction first of all. Now there are two types of changes which can take place uh, with molecules. I mean wherever you have reactants and products or wherever you have substances there are two types of changes that can take place. One is a physical change where no bonds are broken, no new bonds are formed. That is one kind of change which involves change in shape or change of state of matter. For example, when you boil water, what happens? The water changes into water vapor. So the state of water is changing, but still water is water. So water is not getting changed. So the bond between hydrogen and oxygen is not broken or no new bond between uh, hydrogen or oxygen with any other uh, element is formed. So no new bonds are formed, no existing bonds are broken. There is only the change of state. That is, it is changing from liquid to vapor state. Or when you cut a potato into slices, what happens earlier? The shape is changing, but still the chemical composition of potato remains the same. So there is no change in the chemical composition of the substance. So these are examples of physical change. On the other hand, there is another type of change called chemical change. In this what happens? Bonds are broken. New bonds are also formed. So new compounds are formed as a result. So these are called chemical change or chemical reactions. So here new bonds are formed or existing bonds are broken. For example, curdling of milk. So you would have observed that if you take milk in a glass, you put some vinegar into that or you put some uh, lemon juice into that, what happens? And if you keep it at a temperature which is little warm, not very cold, what happens? It is seen that it changes into curd. So the milk, the composition of milk gets changed into curd. So curd is totally different. So that means a lot of bonds were broken, new bonds were formed and that is why you got a new substance altogether. So this is an example of a chemical change. Similarly, rusting of iron. So if you see the rust which is formed on iron, that is due to ferric oxide. So the co composition itself changed. This was pure iron, but now due to the formation of ferric oxide with when, when being exposed to water and air, the rusting took place and that ferric oxide appears as red, reddish to brownish colored rust. So this is also an example of a chemical change. So chemical change always involves breaking of old bonds, formation of new bonds, whereas physical change doesn't involve all that. It is just about the change of shape or change of state of matter. So now while we are talking about enzymes, we are going to talk about the chemical changes. We are going to talk about the chemical reactions which take place. So we will now talk about rate of a reaction because this is what that actually gets impacted. So what, is, what do we mean by rate of a reaction? Whenever we talk about a chemical reaction, it is about some of the reactants getting converted into products. So the rate of a reaction is nothing but the amount of product which is formed per unit time. So that defines the speed of the reaction. So a chemical reaction is nothing but reactants getting changed into products. So how much product is formed per unit time at what speed products are getting formed that defines the rate of a reaction. This is often known as the speed of a reaction as well. So for example, we took the example of curdling of milk as an example uh, as a, an example of a chemical change. So what actually happens during the process of curd curdling? Now milk we all know is a colloidal solution. So it is composed of many biomolecules like fats, proteins and sugars. Now these small protein molecules remain suspended in the colloidal solution. Now, when you add something like vinegar or when you add something like, um, say, a lemon juice, the pH of the solution changes. 
As a result, the protein molecules start attracting one another and they form clumps. And these clumps together makes the milk change into curd. So this, so this entire thing happens due to change in pH. Now you would have also seen that suppose you have milk, you have a milk in a glass. If you put that glass of milk inside your refrigerator, what happens? The next morning you see that the milk is absolutely fine. Why? Because when you put it in the refrigerator, its pH is not dropped. So the environment or the pH doesn't change and that is why it doesn't curdle. But when you keep the same milk outside overnight, I mean you do not put anything like vinegar or something, but you just put it outside or put it in an area which is little warm. So what happens due to the rise in temperature, the pH changes and the milk curdles. So this is how the chemical reaction takes place. Now the amount of product which is formed over a period of time that defines the rate of reaction. And let us take an example of carbonic acid. What is carbonic acid? This is an acid which is formed from water and carbon dioxide, H2CO3, that is carbonic acid. Now what is the chemical reaction for formation of carbonic acid? It is CO2 plus H2O forms H2CO3. So this is the reaction for normal reaction where there are no enzymes so this is the reaction now let us take this example and let us define how do we define the rate of reaction so rate of reaction is the amount of product that is produced per unit time so this is how we define rate of reaction now there are many factors that can have an impact on the rate of reaction like temperature uh, pH and etc so here we will see how enzymes affect the rate of reaction. Now, if this reaction takes place in absence of enzymes, it is observed that around 200 molecules of H2CO3, that is carbonic acid, is produced. Now, if you allow the same reaction to take place in presence of an enzyme, carbonic anhydrase, carbonic anhydrase. So if you allow this uh, reaction to take place in presence of this enzyme, it is seen that 6 lakhs of molecules are produced. So just look at the difference. Earlier it was 200 and now it is 6 lakhs. So the amount of product which is formed is huge. That means delta P is increasing. When you make use of enzymes, delta P increases. So if delta P increases, that means the rate of reaction also increases. So the reaction becomes faster. So here in this case, we see that the rate increased almost by 10 million times, which is, which is huge. So you can understand that enzymes play a magical role in increasing the rate of chemical reactions. And the reactant on which the enzymes act, they are known as substrate. So substrate is the name or is the term which is used for the reactants on which the enzymes act. So reaction, reactants on which enzymes act. So here which are the reactants CO2 and H2O are the reactants and H2CO3 or carbonic acid is the product here in this case. So now our aim is to understand how enzymes increase the rate of a reaction. So now we will look at enzymes in metabolic reactions. So by now we all know what are metabolic reactions, the reactions which take place inside the body of a living organisms. So when we talk about the digestive system, there are a couple of enzymes which play crucial role in digestive system. For example, we have enzymes like pepsin, we have enzymes like lipase, we also have enzymes for digestion of carbohydrates. So this digests proteins, this digests lipids. So similarly, we have enzymes to digest carbohydrates. So all these enzymes similarly we have another enzyme called salivary amylase which is present in saliva 
So if you see, if you actually try to look at the entire process of digestion, you would see that there are enzymes being produced in each part and they are playing a significant role in the chemical reactions. Here in the mouth, salivary amylase, in the stomach, you have the enzymes which are secreted from the walls of stomach, the gastric juices, they have enzymes. In the small intestine, you have enzymes like pepsin, lipase and the enzymes to digest carbohydrates. So they also play, then pancreatic amylase, they also play important role in the process of digestion. So, so many enzymes they actually take part. Similarly, if you talk about the process of respiration, so there also there are so many enzymes which play a role during the process of this aerobic respiration or the cellular respiration. So when glucose is oxidized to produce uh, carbon dioxide, water and energy in the form of ATP molecules, that is not a single step process, that is a multi-step process. And in each of those steps, you have so many enzymes playing their roles. So that means enzymes play a very crucial role in all the metabolic reactions and that is why we have dedicated a separate section for enzymes because it is very very under important to understand their structure, their function, how do they perform their function. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.